Let's face it, money makes the world go around and it's really important for you that you can talk about money. Why? Well, it's the basis of many, many jobs. Uh, let's take a few examples. If you work in sales or even if you have your own business, you'll have to deal with customers and suppliers. If you work in marketing, maybe you'll have to attend negotiations with creative agencies. If you work in human resources, you'll have to deal with salaries and wages. If you travel on business, you'll have to deal with travel expenses and you'll have to deal with getting hotel bills, restaurant bills and so on. If you're involved in any kind of project, you may have to present uh, figures about, about expenditure. And also, business courses or business English courses will require you to be able to talk about money. And being able to talk about money will be the basis of any course where you go on to talk about finance and economics. So let's explore some of these basic concepts and vocabulary that you need. So first of all, let's have a look at some basic verbs. And the first verb, it's a very simple verb, I'd like to look at the verb pay. But if we look at pay, even that can get, in terms of prepositions and the constructions with pay, this can get a little bit complicated. I can pay for something, pay by, pay by credit card, pay in cash, I can pay off something, I can pay in full, and I can pay into a bank account. Now maybe the meaning of all of these things is clear to you. Being able to be able to use these and use the prepositions correctly is a matter of repetition, 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 and practice, practice, practice. And one of the things I can recommend doing is writing out some sentences for yourself in which you exploit these expressions and you try to use the expressions. When you begin to write your own sentences or write your own examples from your own experience, you will begin to find that you also find the vocabulary for other expressions to do with money. So let me take some examples here where I've taken these expressions with pay and I've written some sentences. So let's have a look at these sentences. My salary, my salary is paid directly into a bank account. My energy bills are paid by direct debit. And my home insurance is paid by standing order. I don't pay for so many things in cash, but pay by credit card using contactless. I paid the last instalment on the car, and now the car is paid off in full and I own it. So here, we've not only tried to use the expressions that we met with pay, but we've also tried to build up some new sentences and we've come up with some other examples to do with money and to do with payment. And the first of these is direct debit. Now direct debit is an arrangement with a bank that allows a company to transfer money from the account uh, on a date that's agreed. So for example, I've agreed with my energy companies that they can take the money for my energy bills on the first of every month for the preceding month. Now, on the other hand, I pay my home insurance by standing order. Now, a standing order is a little bit different in that it's an instruction that I have made to my bank to make regular fixed payments. So direct debit can be variable and st standing order can be fi is fixed. So my home insurance, I pay this in four quarterly payments over the years. These are fixed amounts and I've made arrangements with the bank and with the company that they can take the money by standing order from my bank at the end of every quarter. Now sometimes we decide to buy things, maybe larger things, on instalment. So for example, if I bought a car and the car cost $24,000, then maybe I don't want to pay that $24,000 all in one go, but I want to pay this in different periods. I might decide that the car is $24,000. I 
I, I have $4,000 in savings. I put that down as a payment, as a deposit on the car, and then I have $20,000 remaining. And I might decide over the period of two or maybe three years that every month I will pay off the car by paying an instalment, a part payment on the car every month. So say I've agreed to two years and I've paid the $20,000 off over the two years and I come to the 24th month and I pay the last instalment, then I've paid the car off, the car is fully paid, I now own the car and the money that I owe for the car is paid off in the full amount. Now let's look at some other common verbs to do with money. Spend, waste, donate. And I spend money on, I waste money on, and I donate money to. And again, to give some examples, uh, I spent a lot of money on Christmas presents during the Christmas period. Waste money on. He always wastes a lot of money on going to really expensive restaurants. Or you could turn that around as well. You could say going to expensive restaurants is a real waste of money. And donate? Well, I donate a small sum of money to a cancer charity every month. Donate money to. Now, the next thing that we would probably want to look at is a bank account. And how does a bank account work? If you're uh, doing some kind of study where you're going to spend some time um, in another country, you're going to study abroad for a semester or for a year even, one of the things that you're going to do is set up a bank account. Or later on in your career, you might go and work in another country, and one of the things you'll have to do again is set up a bank account. And the kind of bank account that we set up in order to make our day-to-day payments and to get our day-to-day -day or monthly salary into our bank accounts is, in British English, we call it a current account, and in American English, this is called a checking account. And let's have a look, a look at this. So my current account these days, I run the current account with my bank online. And if I look online and I look at my current account, there's certain information that's given to me. So first of all, it tells me a little bit about the current account. Um, I can see that there's a sort code, and the sort code is the number of the bank who have my bank account. And then, of course, there's the account number. And I will need probably both of those numbers in doing different kinds of transactions, so payments in and payments out. And when I look at the transactions, I can find them in statements. Now, statements, you can get them by me. You can get them by mail. You can get them with an ATM. These days, you can opt in to get paperless statements, which is what I do. So when I look at my statements on my bank account, I will have this kind of information. And there's some, there's some useful vocabulary for you here. So it's a current account. Um, I'm in Britain. For each payment, there are details about the organization that is making the payment or the organization to whom I'm making the payment. There's details about the type of payment, and I'll, come, I'll give more details on that in, in a few minutes. And then there's detail, there are, there's a list of money, and that's the details of all the money that's coming into my account. Now, these are deposits. The verb is make. You can make a deposit, or these are, this is my income, and these are my incomings. For most of us, this will be our salary or our wage. Or if you've sold something, uh, you sold maybe something on, on eBay or something like this, you will have money coming into your account. And then there'll be also be a list of money that's going out of your account. And these are withdrawals. These are your outgoings and this is your expenditure. And when you balance up the money in and the money, money coming out, then there is some kind of figure that is left in, in total in your bank account. And that can hopefully either be in the black, which is a plus amount, or if it's a minus amount, it can be in the red. So let's have a look at these types of payment. As I mentioned before, payments can be made by, or you can withdraw money. It's one of the things I do, is withdraw money 
very regularly cash money from an ATM. And this is an automated teller machine. But it will be entered on the bank statement on the type of bank account as ATM. The type might be a credit where you're putting in some kind of money or somebody's putting in some kind of money for you. For example, again, selling something on eBay. Every month I make a, a number of bank transfers. I buy different things. I buy things online and I make bank transfers to the company from whom I've bought the bank. I've bought the goods. These are bank transfers. We've already looked at uh, standing orders, which are arrangements with the bank to make fixed payments and direct debits, which are arrangements on to pay amounts on certain dates, uh, but they can be variable amounts. For certain transactions with the bank, I might be make I might be paying some bank charges. I sometimes um, transfer some money abroad, or it's transferred from uh, from abroad to me, and there is some kind of bank charge for doing that, and that's entered as a bank charge on the on the bank statement. And also from the bank, there might be some kind of interest charges. One of the things I can do with my bank is arrange a loan. I can borrow money from the bank or maybe I want to buy a larger item again like a car or something like this. Or I can also arrange an overdraft. I have a, an arrangement with my British bank account that in any month I can have a, a small overdraft if I need to go into the red for any reason. But the bank will charge me a percentage of the money that I've borrowed or a percentage of the money that I've um, gone into the red and I will have to pay interest and that will be a kind of bank charge and it will be shown up as a type of, of uh, payment on my bank account. And we should never forget as well that you borrow money from the bank and the bank lends me money. Borrow from and lend. So if you're traveling and you're traveling on business, you're going to pay for, have to pay for all different kinds of things. So how do you pay for all of these different things? So if I travel by airline or I travel by railway or I travel by bus or I travel by taxi, the money that I pay is a fare. Um, I think it's worthwhile here noting the spelling of fare here. It's F-A-R-E. For other kinds of things, I might pay some kind of fee. Um, I might pay a fee, for example, to a government body, uh, such as a court. I might pay a fee to a lawyer. If you're studying at university and you're, you're paying for the teaching that has been given for you at the university, that might be some kind of tuition fee. If somebody pays me money or I pay something by PayPal, which I use, uh, the company calls that a fee. You could also view that as a commission. A commission, again, uh, this is something that can be earned by salespeople. Uh, a lot of salespeople, they earn a basic salary, but they'll also earn another sum of money, which is a percentage to do with the number of goods or services that they've sold, and this is a commission. If you're traveling on business, um, you'll go to restaurants. Um, in the UK, when you go to a restaurant, you'll ask for a bill. Um, if you're in the States, you'll ask for a check. These are more or less understood in, in, in both areas. When you pay the bill or the check, whether that's by credit card or you pay in cash, you will get a receipt. And if you're traveling on business, you will need to keep all your receipts. If you've really liked the service in the restaurant, then you'll give some kind of voluntary tip uh, to, the, to the serving staff. Many restaurants these days, they will put a percentage on the bill, maybe eight or 10 percent, and they'll charge you a service charge uh, for using the restaurant. So when you travel, you'll have all kinds of things like airline tickets, restaurant bills, hotel bills, receipts from taxi companies, and all of these will be your travel expenses. And when you get back to your home country or you get back to your company, then you will have to make some kind of travel expenses claim. Uh, let's look at some other things. If I park my car in the wrong place, and it's a place where I'm not allowed to park my car, I'm going to pay a fine. Um, this is sometimes called, in the UK, it's called a penalty charge. 
when you get in the UK, when you get back to your car and you see that piece of paper on your windshield of your car saying that you've done something wrong, you've probably parked in the wrong place. Uh, this is called a penalty charge notice and, and you, or a PCN for, for short, and you have to pay this penalty charge. The place that you're living, you'll either be paying rent or you'll be paying a mortgage. Rent is what you pay when you don't own the property. You've got some kind of landlord or there's somebody else who owns the property and probably every month you pay a sum of money in order to be able to use that property. If, however, I want to buy the property that I'm living in, I can go to my bank or some other kind of financial institution and I can arrange to pay a mortgage. And this, again, is usually paid on a monthly basis. It's a sum of money. I'm paying off the capital and usually some kind of interest for the mortgage. And I pay, I pay off the mortgage every month. And eventually, over a number of years, I will pay the mortgage. And at some stage, um, you pay it in full and then you own the property that you live in. And then you no longer have to pay mortgage and you no longer have to pay rent. When you're older, then hopefully you'll get some kind of pension. This can be a private pension or it can be some kind of a state, a national scheme, state pension, and you'll get the payments for that. Maybe you'll be getting some kind of mixture of the two. Now, when we talk about money, it's also really nice sometimes to use especially if you're in, in an exam situation, maybe whether the exam is in writing or in speaking, it's quite nice sometimes to put some idioms in. Again, it's, it's maintaining a balance. Just put one or two idioms in. It can give a good impression of your use of English. And there's lots and lots of idioms to do with money and to do with finance. And what I would like to do here is look at some idioms to do with money, which are connected with parts of the body. So the first expression I'd like to look at is, it costs an arm and a leg. Now, if I say something costs an arm and a leg, this means that something is really expensive. For example, we had uh, a little bit before, we had the example of he wastes a lot of money on going to expensive restaurants. Going to an expensive restaurant can sometimes cost an arm and a leg. Then I've got the expression foot. I can foot the bill. Again, we talked before about tuition fees. Maybe you go to a university where you have to pay for the teaching. And maybe it's not you that's paying these tuition fees. It's maybe it's a parent's or some other relative of yours and they're paying the tuition fees. They're footing the bill for your tuition fees. We've got a couple of expressions with mouth. You can put your money where your mouth is. So, for example, if I have a friend and they talk about a company or a setup company and it's a really good investment and they're trying to persuade me to invest in the same company, one of the questions that I might ask them is, well, have you have you put your money where your mouth is? And this basically means have you invested in the thing that you're recommending? So have you actually put an investment into this company yourself? And then we have another expression with mouth and also with hand. And this is living from hand to mouth. And this means that you can pay, that you earn enough money or that you have enough money that every month you can just pay for the basic essentials for living. So things like rent and food and heating. Uh, many people think in this country, for example, that health workers um, should, ha should earn more money because at the moment, some of them can only live hand to mouth on the money that they earn. I can use my nose and I can pay for the nose through the nose. Sorry, I can pay through the nose for something. And this means that I've paid far too much money for something. So, for example, I saw a, a painting in, a, in an art exhibition. And I really liked that painting and I really paid a lot of money for the painting. And really, if I look at other paintings by the artist, it was too much money. And, but I really liked it and I paid through the nose.
And another thing I can use here then is fist. And I can talk about somebody being tight fisted. And if somebody is tight fisted, they really, really don't like to spend their money. And they have a reputation for not being uh, very generous with the money that they've got. Tight fisted. Being able to talk about money is important to you, not only in a business English course, or for your studies, but it will be really important for you in life and it will be important for you in careers. And if you can talk about these basic things about money, then that will enable you to move on with other things in your course. You might be dealing with, or you probably will be dealing with finance and economics in more detail in your business English course, or you might be dealing with it in, in other courses in your degree. Please make a comment on this video. Maybe you have some other nice uh, idioms or expressions to do with money that you would like to share with other people and I'd like to and then I'd say goodbye and I'll see you in the next video where we'll begin to deal with uh, the basic concepts and vocabulary of finance. Thank you very much indeed.